He does start the new year off right. <laughs> okay, we, we'll deal with that. Uh, good afternoon. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. on Tuesday, January 3rd, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are here with us this evening and certainly wish everyone a happy new year and hopefully a good year for 2017. Uh, if we could just take a moment for solid meditation, please. Thank you. I would ask Councilman Davis if he would lead us in the pledge. Madam Clerk, would you lead us in the roll, please? Mayor Call Bell. Roll. Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Davis. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. Councilmember Reese. Here. Councilmember Shule. Uh, here. We have uh, one proclamation that we'd like to present this evening. I would ask uh, Olio Sands Bell and Cheryl Thomas and Charlene Reese and everyone else if you would join me, please. Uh, this is a resolution that speaks to the issue of human trafficking and declares Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And it speaks to the fact that whereas the community, we care about the dignity, security, physical, and emotional well-being of all of our neighbors, and we recognize the right of all individuals to live their best lives in safety and freedom. It speaks to the fact that whereas human trafficking is defined by the United Nations as the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by improper means, such as force, abduction, fraud, or coercion, for an improper purpose, including forced labor or sexual exploitation, Whereas anyone can be a victim of human trafficking, regardless of gender, age, race, socioeconomic status, nationality, or immigration status. According to the United States State Department, particularly vulnerable populations in the United States include children in the child welfare and juvenile justice system, runaway and homeless youth, persons with limited English proficiency, persons with disabilities, and LGBTI individuals, among others. Whereas we recognize that the trauma of human trafficking has consequences for victims, families, and society, and can lead to long-term health problems, psychological distress, instability, and homelessness, and increased risk for future violence, whereas Durham Crisis Response Center, Transforming Hope Ministries, Justice Matters, and Salvation Army are partnering with local, state, and federal law enforcement and criminal justice agencies to identify and meet the needs of human trafficking survivors and end this modern slavery in our community. Whereas we must increase awareness and action to effect change, and then trafficking begins by reducing vulnerabilities and increasing opportunities of those at risk, including jobs, education, and housing, promoting healthy, respectful, nonviolent relationships, and building a caring, inclusive, and connected community. We're strongly committed to empowering victims through collaboration among organizations and systems that confront this crisis. Whereas local government, health professionals, law enforcement, faith communities, educators, and civic organizations to work together to learn more to identify and serve victims of human trafficking and to speak out about this issue so that all may live in freedom and safety. And now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim January 2017 as Human Trafficking Awareness Month in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to observe this month by increasing awareness of human trafficking taking action to change the culture, and working together to end the violence of, and what's my hand, the corporate city of Durham, this is the 
third day of January, 19, 2017. I'm going to present this to Aurelia, and then I'm sure she will introduce the others that are with us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to make some slides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hand that off. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Um, good evening, Council. My name is Charlene Reese, and I am um, working with the Durham Crisis Response Center to um, develop trafficking service services for human trafficking victims in Durham. And I am joined by Aurelia Sands-Bell, who is our executive director, Sherelle Thomas, who is our outreach coordinator, and Abby Tenalia, who is the founder and executive director of Transforming Hope Ministries, which is a, another organization in Durham working to fight human trafficking. And we just, on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you for um, taking the opportunity tonight to declare uh, January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month. It's a, been a long time coming um, for this important issue that is important in Durham, in North Carolina, um, and the U.S. Um, many organizations have been working a long time to get here where we can speak about it publicly and people are listening. Um, we have a lot of partners in the community, um, in the city, in the county. Uh, we appreciate the work of the um, youth Relationship Violence Task Force that has many multidisciplinary agencies in it, as well as the Child Sexual Exploitation Protocol Task Force and um, Social Services, the Police Department, and then our other partners. And we um, ask that you all continue to do the good work that you do in Durham to um, find ways uh, to create affordable housing and um, reduce the vulnerabilities of our citizens and our youth so that they do not end up in trafficking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I would ask are there comments by members of the council? Are there any? Okay, Don. <laughs> Recognize the council. Well, <clears throat> I'll be bold enough. I have no singing voice, but on a unique occasion like this, I will um, blaze the way. If you all will join me, Mr. Mayor. Happy birthday. Stevie Wonder version. It was clear that the better singing was coming from that side of the I know, I know, I know. I appreciate it, and I uh, was telling Eddie that we're fortunate to be on this council and have birthdays and have Councilman Davis as a part of this because he always finds a way to uh, make a very special, very, very kind and grateful words. For that, I'm very appreciative. Having said that, uh, let's move on to any other announcements. If not, I uh, recognize the city manager for his priority. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, good evening and happy new year to everyone. No priority items. I recognize the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of council, on uh, agenda item number one, municipal election process. Um, the date of the proposed public hearing is January 17th, 2017, not January 16th, which is what was in the memo. And uh, that change didn't get made from the uh, work session, but that is the Tuesday. A motion on the city attorney's prior times. It's been proper to move a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Uh, likewise, the city clerk, any prior items? No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in that case, we'll proceed with the agenda. Consent agenda items may be approved with a single motion. If a council member of public uh, removes an item, we'll discuss that later in the agenda, and I'll read the heading of each one of the consent agenda items. Item one is the municipal election process. Uh, item three is a contract amendment with SunTrust Mortgage, Inc. Item four is the final approval of home community housing development organizational 
funds to the Durham Community Land Trustees, Inc. for the construction of an affordable rental housing unit located at 1207 Kent Street. Item five is parking pay by phone mobile payment services contract. Item six is construction contract award to C.T. Wilson Construction Company, Inc. for the downtown parking garages elevator modernization project. Item seven is interlocal agreement between the cities of Durham and Raleigh, the towns of Cary and Wake Forest, Wake County and Go Triangle for administrative distribution of the Wake County $7 vehicle registration tax. Item eight is Eno Economic Development Zone of Orange County Amendment Number Two to an interlocal agreement between Orange County and the City of Durham. Item nine is the bid report for November 2016. Item 10 is the proposed acquisition of approximately 50.173 acres for future park project located at 632 North Hoover Road and 621 Cheek Road. Item 11 is Duke University Health Systems Office of Community and Local Government Relations City of Durham FY 2016-2017 grant. Item 12 is the City of Durham Training to Work Grant Project Ordinance. Item 19 is an item that can be found on the general business agenda. I entertain a motion for the approval of the so consent moved, agenda. Mr. Been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Moving to the general business agenda, item 19, proposed acquisition of approximately 2.19 acres for future fire station 18, located at 6911, 6919 Herndon Road. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, at the work session, you had asked me to provide you with some information regarding uh, a potential involuntary taking of that property uh, if if need be based on some of the concerns that you'd raised about the price I did provide a memo to you all uh, late this morning that I hope you all have seen um, I'm happy to answer any questions about that um, um, if you have if you have concerns about the purchase price and want to explore a, uh, a potential alternative uh, mechanism for acquiring the property uh, you've heard the city attorney's comments that recognize first councilman Moffitt do you have a hand Thank you. Um, I just want to take a moment. I, I have uh, learned. Uh, I have learned that um, I was a little intemperate in my uh, language that I used at the work session. Uh, I, I should have said I want to apologize uh, to the sellers for <clears throat> my characterization of the deal, and I just simply want to say that uh, after reviewing it carefully, um, I had come to the conclusion that I still hold that the contract price was higher than the actual value. And I think it merits our careful consideration. Thank you. Are there other comments, questions about the, the item? Rec recognize, is that Councilman Moffitt again? Yes, that was me again. <clears throat> uh, since I put this item, I, I, I've raised the issue. I wanted to at least try to explain um, uh, how I got to my conclusion and um, I've got I prepared a very simple little set of examples I think there's enough there I've learned that the uh, seller um, has some prior experience with selling lots in the area, that, um, that they sold seven lots for $782,250. And uh, if, so the very first little section says, if you took that, you come up with a value per lot. And if you, and if you look at this as five lots that we're buying, it's a value of $558,000. $750. That to me is close enough to the appraised value of $600,000 that it's not, I, I, I would not argue with the appraised value. And in fact, I have n not ever argued with the appraised value. What I have argued with are the adjustments to the appraised value. And uh, so I'm starting by saying, I'll give you an example. So the value to the seller, what the seller said regarding a, a, a um, methodology is that they would need to receive the price for the property less any incidental developmental savings from the change in use. 
And then on top of that, they would need to receive anything that they had to spend because of the change in use. I'm paraphrasing. So the value to the market, these are examples because I don't know the actual numbers, but if they, they have to do water, sewer, stormwater, roads, curb and gutter, impact fees, if those added up to $100,000, if the appraised value is 600000 by the time that they had made the improvements and sold the lots, they would net $500,000, which is in, in keeping with the methodology that the seller has put forth. So if you, that's the second section in what I handed out. The third section says if you start with that net value, and you add back to it, as compensation to them, any improvements they've already done. Because we back those out to get to the net value. So if they've already graded it, if they've already put in roads and curb and gutter, well, that's a, that's a sunk cost to them, and they would need to recover that. And then if they do have a cost for changing the use, for example, if they had a contract that they had to break and it cost them $25,000. I'm just using it as an example. You'd add that back in too, and then you'd come up with a fair purchase price. What, what we know is the appraised value is 600,000. We know that they do, um, uh, there was a memo from our stormwater department that was on our agenda, and it includes um, that uh, knowledge that they uh, are gonna need sand filters for stormwater on the road that they have to build and dry ponds for the lots. So there is an expense there as well as the other things. What we don't know is any improvements they already have in place, what the value of those improvements are, or any cost the seller might have to us. So the question is, the, 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 the contract we have in front of us tonight is $700,000. And the question is, uh, and maybe staff can provide us with some information on the improvements that have been made to date, uh, any penalties that the seller may incur by selling to us, and um, so forth. Uh, good evening, David Fleischer, uh, General Services Department. Uh, the seller uh, is being uh, forced, in this case, to forego building houses, which is the business they're in, and profiting therefrom. Uh, I think in the best of all possible worlds, the seller would move forward, would choose to move forward with the deal that they had that is to build houses on this property and make a profit were it not for the city's desire to acquire this property from them. So the um, what we were told in the work session is that they had a deal in place to sell the property to a builder, which is different than what you just described. What you just described is that the seller is planning to build houses on it. So if the seller is planning to build houses, then there's an opportunity cost that they have to forego. But if they plan to sell these lots as they did the other seven lots in the area, then their total value that they're gonna receive from it is when they sell the lots. The builder will then have the opportunity cost, the, uh, the opportunity, the, the value add from building a house on it. So I'm a little confused, maybe you can clear that up for me, whether this seller is building houses or selling lots. Thank you. This seller has conveyed a great deal of their existing parcel there to a builder to build houses. What they were retaining for themselves was five lots where we are building a fire station so that they could build houses themselves there. And they are uh, unable to do so, and part of their deal to convey most of their property to the home builder included uh, the reservation for them to be able to do a property exchange, a property swap with that builder and take back some of the property they conveyed to them so they could sell that property to us and so that builder could comply with open space requirements in the, I, I appreciate this is confusing, so that the builder could comply with open space requirements by moving part of that uh, open space onto some of the lots, the five lots that they were proposing to build houses on. I hope that answers the question. Uh, not precisely. Did you tell us at the work session that they had a contract 
that we needed to close on this by the 4th or we would lose the opportunity? They do have a contract that uh, they conveyed the lion's share of their property to a builder on November 2nd. That contract has a 150-day clause in it to do the property exchange that would enable the seller to convey property to us. 60 days have passed of that, and uh, if we receive city council authority to purchase this property, we will have 90 days per our contract to close and thereby uh, get in before the termination or expiration of the 150-day period. The 90 days to close is uh, something that we've put into the contract? It is. It's a it fairly standard, 80, fairly standard days. conveyance for the city of Durham to be able to close within 90 days subsequent so, to city council approval. Could it be 80 days? Could it be 80 days? Right. It could. It so could. so the, the January 4th date that we were given is actually not fixed in stone? It is fixed in stone on the agreement that we made with this seller that their, uh, so, the, the seller's option to the city to purchase the property expires on January 4th. That was an extension from the prior date of December 20th. When you all had the lot, when you had the property appraised, um, did the appraiser, uh, all of this was made known to the appraiser, is that correct? That is correct. The future use of the property, highest and best use. That is correct. The appraiser, right. the appraiser provided two reports, one that valued the raw land of 2.19 acres and another that valued the saleability of five lots in that neighborhood. And that was the one that came to $600,000. Correct. Sir. Right. And then have you provided to council, I, I'm, we've been talking about this now for several weeks. So the news that the seller is building lots, not selling lot, building homes, not selling lots. It's taken me a little bit by surprise. Have you provided council with an analysis of the lost profit that these, you're, you're using uh, what I understand you to say now is that the appraised value of the lots is $600,000 and that uh, General Services has added another $100,000 to the selling cost, to the purchase price, in order to compensate the seller for lost profit, my, uh, the opportunity cost. I don't know that it's tit for tat. Uh, I believe in our original memo it spoke to the uh, potential profit of a house being in the 18 to 20 percent range of the sale price of homes that would be built and that was figured into it uh, more more so than that being the differential between the six hundred thousand dollar appraised value and the seven hundred thousand dollar purchase price more so than that was the uh, sellers uh, negotiated price based on us asking them to change their plans they have been uh, held up or they've been working with us uh, in good faith for the past 13 months as we've worked toward this and they've changed their plans. They've gone through expenses with land planners, uh, with survey, and they will continue to uh, incur those costs uh, as they move toward resubdividing the property so that they can sell 2.19 acres to the city. Okay. Uh, the question I asked originally, just so that I know the answer to that, uh, what improvements have they put in place there? The sellers have graded the lot. They have removed the existing structures. And before conveyance to the city, they will deliver sewer to the rear of that lot so that we will have something to connect to. OK. So to date, they've graded and removed, in, 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 in process of grading, they've removed the structures. That is correct. OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I don't know exactly where to take it from here. <clears throat> the, um, the news that the seller intends to build on it, as I said, is taking me by surprise. Um, I think I, I would li love to hear from everybody else and see where we want to go with this. Recognize Councilman Shule. Did you raise your hand, Mayor Pro Tem? Is there anyone else? I've got Councilman Shule, Mayor Pro Tem, Councilwoman Johnson. In that order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I appreciate Don raising this. Um, <clears throat> the um, it's been valuable, and uh, I've, I've I've you know been really interesting to delve into this and try to figure this out. Uh, and I really uh, think it's been you know what uh, good city council work is. Uh, but I, I feel like now at this point, once I've heard uh, David's explanation, um, I am ready to go forward in favor of the administration's uh, recommendation uh, because now my understanding is that there are five lots, that the, these five lots were not just to be sold to a developer with no upside, but were actually to be developed by the current owner uh, and so the, the owner is thereby foregoing some upside, which I think would then make this a very reasonable price given the appraisal of the other five lots and the comparative sales price, uh, which Don has listed on his uh, sheet here. So um, I'm satisfied with the administration's recommendation. I appreciate Don's work on it and uh, think that we've probably uh, got the right price. Thank you. Recognize the mayor pro tem. I was merely going to uh, recommend that we go with the administration's recommendation because I don't know of another viable alternative at this point uh, unless the administration can share a viable alternative other than eminent domain and I don't think that's viable. Mayor Pro Tem, I think, uh, you know, two issues. One, viable alternative to negotiate a different price on this piece of property. If I'm correct, David, that's probably not a viable option no. based on the, the seller's communication to you. I spoke with this, David Fleischer, again, General Services Department. I did speak with the seller today and attempted to renegotiate the deal or inquire if they were willing to uh, have some latitude in their purchase price, and they were not. Thank you. And then the other viable option is to look for another piece of property. And I think mm -hmm. as you've yes. indicated uh, uh, previously, and you may want to repeat that again for the record, that uh, yes. that's pretty difficult. And in fact, uh, we may in fact be willing to pay a higher price if something was available for this piece of property because it's a better suited location from the, for, the, for the fire fire station to be located. That is correct, Mr. Manager. We searched the uh, target area as identified by the fire department and there were no other properties that were accessible for purchase that and this and furthermore this property in particular is at the epicenter uh, of their target range target area recognize councilwoman johnson and then councilwoman moffitt councilman johnson thank you mr mayor um i just had a couple of questions that um from information that's in the first memo that we got from you all, that's item number six um, in our agenda documents. The So the city is buying um, two and a half buildable lots but are impacting the other two and a half lots because of open space requirements. Could you explain a little bit more about that and why, so like if we're only buying the two and a half lots, what happens to the other two and a half lots? Thank you, two and a half uh, lots is primarily what comprises the two and a half acre, the 2.19 acres that we're purchasing. However, there is some property behind that, those two, behind that 2.19 acres that was part of the open space as required to meet impervious surface for the development as a whole. As part of that property is conveyed to the city, that developer, that being the home builder that purchased the lion's share of this property is required to move their open space elsewhere and they will be moving it to the other two and a half lots just north of our property on Herndon Road and that's where the open space will uh, be located for this development. I, I'm, I think I'm still a little confused. So we're paying for five lots but we're only getting two and a half. We're getting two and a half lots plus the land behind it that had not originally been platted as being saleable lots. Rather, it was platted as open space for the development and now that open space is being relocated to accommodate us getting a square lot. 
Okay, but so the city will own that land or that, not? That is correct. We're okay. going to own the whole 2.19 acres. Excuse me, Councilman Johnson, but I, I, I think uh, maybe I mis misunderstood what I said. We okay. will not own the two and a half lots north of our property, but rather we will own two and a half lots along Herndon Road and the uh, uh, property behind it that coincides with our property. Okay. I hope that clarifies it. Um, so, but we're, so we're only gonna own two and a half lots. These lots are sized at approximately, I'm hoping to make this easier. These size yeah. lots are sized at approximately a quarter acre for sake of argument. Mm -hmm. And we are buying 2.19 acres. We're buying a great deal more than three quarters of an acre, than three lots worth of property. The two and a half lots comes from what is fronting Herndon Road. We are buying two and a half lots worth of width along Herndon Road and the corresponding amount of property behind it, totaling okay. 2.19 acres. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. My other question was on page two. Um, one of the questions from council was whether we had discussed with the family um, buying three acres for 500,000 and that their response was that the property had been placed in conservancy so that it could not be subdivided, sold, or developed. Is that a different property that they're talking about? It is. Those are properties across Herndon Road. Uh, they were the former Herndon family farm and the Herndon family has placed all of their property that's remaining in conservancy and is not open to sale or breaking of that trust. Great, thank you. So this is so this property here is the only property that's available for us. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. Let me recognize Councilman Moffitt. Who else wants to speak that hasn't spoken? Go back to Councilman Shule and then the Mayor Pro Tem. I do have one question. But go ahead. I'll finish after the principal. <coughs> I just I want to be clear. Just so we know when we when we vote, like what we're doing. So the five lots. Uh, to reach their appraised value of $600,000 need to be improved and buildable. Is that correct? That is correct. And, and part of that improvement and buildability includes grading, includes sewer. That is correct. So to get to the $600,000 value, um, they also would have to do on top of that water, stormwater, the, the road that they're showing on the plan that you provided, curb and gutter, sand filters, and uh, impact fees. Is that right? I, it's partially it, correct. I spoke with the seller about that today, and they depicted the road going there, not with curb and gutter, but essentially a glorified driveway going from the other part of the development where the home builder is buying to these five lots. It would not be a city street. It would not have curb and gutter and be so improved. Furthermore, uh, the developer uh, phrased it to me that they still are building sewer across the creek from the main part of the development to the area of these five lots. However, it's being slightly shortened that they're not delivering it exactly to five lots and the value of servicing each of those five lots uh, would be nominal. Uh, he, he threw out a number of approximately $1,000 per lot Oh, he's saving. Yes, yes. But to get to the 600000 they would have to install the sewer line. The, to, in order, the appraiser said they should be able to sell the five lots for $600,000. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, they would have to stall, install, I think it's a 585-foot-long sewer line. Is that correct? The same sewer line, that roughly. They're installing, they are installing that right. same sewer line for us, so, albeit slightly shorter. All right. So... I just want to say that we start with 600. You deduct off the, the the money that they would not spend if they were selling to us for water, um, stormwater, and impact fees, and so that's from that value, whatever that dollar figure is, to 700,000 is the premium that we're paying. I, so it's not some number that's 600,000 plus a sewer line, it's 600,000 minus those other improvements. And to get to 700,000 is the premium. So I just wanna make sure everybody understands 
the premium, we're not paying for the sewer line, we're paying for things that they're not delivering. So that's, that's all I have to say. Recognize Councilman Shul. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Jillian's, uh, Councilwoman Johnson's um, question uh, reminded me of some comments that I wanted to make relative to the Herndon family's uh, land, uh, which um, I just wanted to say that in, in case members of the public don't realize that the Herndon family has made a really strong commitment to keep their family's land as green agricultural space in the midst of all the development down uh, in South Durham in the South Point area. And uh, this is really a gift to all of us that's made by this the Herndon family, which is <clears throat> foregoing the potentially enormous profits, <clears throat> excuse me, on the sale of their very prime land. And um, I just wanted to appreciate that. Uh, as, as part of this discussion because it is a it is really a very very unusual thing that they are doing and a, and, a, and a real gift to our whole community so thank you I, I, I want to ask one question and I, I, I'm very familiar with the area I live less than a mile from the site that we're talking about and I should have asked this a long time ago uh, is the fire chief here he's not okay um, Tell me why this is an epicenter. Bo Ferguson, Deputy City Manager for Operations. So in my discussions with the, the uh, uh, fire chief, his staff has a fairly robust planning operation based on calls for service, uh, reviews with the uh, land use plans for the area, and all of those sort of go into a, a formula. We have a software package actually that, that determines calls for service uh, and radiuses around certain points. Uh, this uh, is considered the epicenter because that's what all of that analysis kicked out for us. This is the uh, optimal location in terms of shortening the calls for service to the intended service area for Fire Station 18. So this is not very far from the Parkwood Fire Station. That's correct. The, the major concern about the Parkwood location is the access roads into and out of the, that uh, center of the Parkwood neighborhood. This location uh, provides access to much more uh, high capacity roads, which gives the uh, fire apparatus and the responding crews the ability to get to more of the area in a timelier fashion, getting into and out of the Parkwood station uh, is problematic uh, in terms of the, the road network that serves the Parkwood station. Okay, I, I wouldn't buy that, I mean, but it is what it is. So how would the station work in conjunction with the Parkwood fire station? As uh, you may be aware, Mayor, and, and I know has been discussed somewhat publicly, we have had discussions with uh, the County Fire Department, which now operates what used to be the Parkwood Volunteer Fire Department and Bethesda. Uh, we're in an analysis period looking at the possibility of uh, some sort of cooperation up to the possibility of merging those. Um, our understanding would be you know, that if that were to go forward, uh, the city and county would cooperate on the development of Fire Station 18 and the Parkwood uh, location would go out of service. The county uh, agrees that the location for Parkwood is not optimal for serving that area in, given the, the growth patterns in South Durham. That makes more sense to me. Uh, if in fact uh, you want to build this fire station where, you, where it's proposed and they have the Parkwood fire station, which to me is five, 10 minutes away. I know five, 10 minutes can be a long, long distance when you're trying to fight a fire, but um, it, it makes more sense to have this fire station serve the area than the Parkwood. It does make sense to me to have the Parkwood fire station, this fire station uh, in, in the locations that they are, but uh, that's, and I should have asked this question a right. long time. Well, ago. I'm sorry, I should, I should have led with that. I, I think in our discussions with the county, we have all presumed based on uh, comments that they've made that the Parkwood station is not in their long-term plans or ours and I think we are certainly hopeful for the benefit of city and county residents that we can cooperate with the county to have one station that serves both needs. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize, is anyone else before I recognize the mayor pro tem? 
I recognize the mayor pro tem. Can you keep your microphone on? I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to move that we accept the item as outlined. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. No further questions? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to one with Council Member Moffitt voting no. Thank you. Are there other items that need to come before the Council? If not, we're adjourned at 7.41 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.